year that goes fast. It's like right. like five years just blew by. Ten years just blew by. Yeah. I saw some one of my one of the guys I worked with in Cleveland just shared a picture from the 2016 RNC. It was eight years ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was like, uh, we're all That's David. Crazy. Yeah. Us and David Moore. It was, awesome Moore. It was yep. like, wow. Eight years flies by. I was like, I'm gonna go. Starts uh, going in chokes. Yeah, it's like I need to yeah, go talk, they sent me up there. I need to go talk to a therapist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. I agree. Or, or, or. Yeah. My thirty year class reunion was last year and I used to think like somebody in their thirty okay. years is a long time. Yeah, and it is. Yeah, my yeah. fifteen. Yeah. yeah, are you another fifteen? Investigative, in depth, local coverage starts now. This is WKBN 27 First News at 11. A Sharon man is headed to trial, charged in a brutal murder and dismemberment of a teenager last month. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm John Rutter for Stan Boney tonight. I'm Lindsay Watson. For the first time, Polly Likens' family heard some of the disturbing details as Deshaun Watkins appeared in Mercer County Court. Tonight, the family's still looking for answers as they cope with the grief. When Paul Lincoln Sr. set eyes on Deshaun Watkins in a Mercer County court Two double, Thursday one, morning, all, all, it was the first time he actually saw the person charged with killing his child, calling it one of the most difficult things he's ever had to do. Nobody wants to go through this. I only wish this on my worst enemy. Watkins is charged with first degree murder and the death of 14 year old Polly Likens last month. The victims remain scattered in a number of locations around Shenango Reservoir. Many of Polly's family members were present at the hearing, hearing the details of Lycan's death for the first time. He didn't just there were because he was an innocent child. He was in that heart. Nobody, nobody deserves nobody deserves what he got. Investigators say blood evidence was found in Watkins' apartment and car, and authorities also recovered a suitcase and a knife, both of which had blood on them. There's a there's only one thing that I can say. Only God will only let me wield one weapon. He is the one that has to answer for this when he walks with God on his judgment day. Mercer County Coroner John Libanati saying Polly died from what he called sharp force trauma in the form of a half a dozen stab wounds to the back of the head and neck. He was the light of my life. He was my heart. And his younger brother Michael is my soul. Watkins could face life in prison without parole if he's convicted. Meanwhile, Lincoln's family members saying they plan to be there for every step of the process as a way to pay tribute to the teenager whose life was taken too soon. And he was loved. We knew he was loved. My last words to my son is I was the last phone call he made. I'm the last person he talked to before this happened. And my last words were, I love you. We will, of course, keep following this case. First News will continue to follow this uh, through the uh, trial. Look for updates on our newscast. You can also find them on the WKBN app and website. Well, clear skies and cooler temperatures this evening. Yeah, not half bad outside <laughs> at all. There could also be some fog overnight and into the morning. So let's hand things over to Chief Meteorologist Paul Weitzel in the Weather Center. Paul. Yeah, it feels really good with that lower humidity across uh, our region this evening. And it's going to stay that way into tomorrow morning, too. Uh, we'll start things off in downtown Warren, uh, where it's been a nice dry evening, too. Storm One Team 27 uh, Viper radar, nice and clear scans all throughout our region. And uh, that's the way it stays. Not only tonight, but through most of your weekend as well. Uh, the clouds are moving on. High pressure is building in and uh, pushing away any activity for some clouds across our area. Uh, as we go into tomorrow, this high pressure system just gets stronger and it'll help bring more sunshine. One little speed bump in tomorrow's forecast. Canadian wildfires, uh, some of that smoke may try to move in over top of us as we go through part of the day, and that'll filter the sun at times uh, into the afternoon. Now, temperatures in the lower 60s now. I do look for a low tonight at around 56 degrees by first thing tomorrow morning. Patchy fog early, then looking for mostly sunny skies as we go into the afternoon. And uh, with that sunshine around, it'll help drive our temperature toward 80. The low humidity stays with us through the day and right on into tomorrow evening. Your weekend gets hotter. I'll take you through the threat of any raindrops coming up. Three people were arrested after police executed a search warrant at a home in Youngstown. 
Gerald Wiggins, Chantel Cato, and Sherry Clinton are now facing charges. Police were serving a warrant for drug activity at a home in the 300 block of East Avondale Avenue. Inside, officers say they found crack cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl. The three are all expected to be in court tomorrow morning. Vinyl chloride could be getting a new designation. The U.S. EPA says it should be named hey, a so high priority watch your head chemical please. under the Toxic Substances Control Act. 40 Thank years you. ago, vinyl chloride was declared cancerous. The chemical is used in food packaging, children's toys, and home building products. The EPA says there were 966 vinyl chloride incidents, including leaks, spills, and fires between 2010 and 2023. The EPA is now accepting public comments on its proposal. Music fans in the Mahoney Valley grabbed their folding chairs and headed down Abbey Road for a Beatles tribute concert tonight in the Youngstown Amphitheater. Rain, a tribute to the Beatles, made a stop in Youngstown featuring Sgt. Pepper and the Magical Mystery Tour, all of your favorite hits. Concert goers had a chance to snag tickets for just 15 bucks if they showed a receipt from downtown businesses, part of an ongoing promotion to support struggling businesses downtown. The smell of festival food is filling the air in Youngstown. The 24th annual Our Lady of Mount Carmel Italian Festival kicked off this afternoon. Whether it's the great food, entertainment, or events, there's something for everyone to enjoy. There's also a lot of new things to experience this year. Several different vendors have set up shop outside of the Basilica, and the children's area has been expanded. Organizers tell us at the heart of this festival is family and the coming together of generations. La Tavola, the Italian table, the family table. Uh, we're celebrating families eating around the table. We're also celebrating our Catholic tradition, the Eucharist, uh, coming around the table for the body and blood of Christ. So it's great to be part of the community. We know a lot of the people that are involved in the festival too, and of course all that, everybody that comes. I think we're really excited. Another big draw at the festival is all the local entertainment. You can hear many local bands and vocalists perform nightly in and outside of the parish social hall. Now, one of the main events of the festival's first night is always the Little Prince and Princess pageant. Boys and girls ages four to nine did their best to show off for the crowd and answer a series of questions. I was thrilled to MC the event tonight, getting to interact with the kids. All of them really know how to turn on the charm. Parents, good luck. Morning meteorologist Annie Giovannucci also served as a judge. Now, the competition was close, but when the votes were counted, nine-year-old Genevieve Wharton and five-year-old Luciano Santoro took home the crowns. Congratulations to all of this year's participants. That is a fun event, fun <laughs> festival too. You need to get to it, John. Oh, uh, absolutely. Well, still to come tonight, Ohio has issued rules about celebrations for the opening of recreational marijuana dispensaries. Find out what you shouldn't be seeing when they open. Growing an award-winning pumpkin, it means packing on the pounds, right? And you might be surprised to learn how much they can add each day. And Christmas in July, the annual toy drive happening in Canfield. You reported 27 investigates. Download the WKBN 27 mobile app and tap report. Nice and smooth.